Good morning. Let's convert our V-Ray scene to GLB. For this, we'll need 3D Studio Max 2024. And with one button, we can go straight to GLB. So, how do we do this? First thing we need is the script. So, I head to my GitHub page, which will be in the description. And you've got a choice of two. For this demonstration, we're just going to download both so I can show you exactly which one suits you best. At the top, select download. And then let's head to our downloads folder. So now that we have our two files, let's just pick the bottom one first and drag that into the viewport. Right click on your toolbar and customize. Go to your toolbar, select the category, go down to Vela. From here, select the automate V-Ray to GLB and drag it to somewhere on your toolbar. Before we export, let's just have a look and see our material. As you can see, we have our V-Ray roughness materials inside of a multi-sub. So we're good to go. Launch the script by clicking on it, and our scene is converted and ready for GLB. So let's export to GLB and put it in our demo folder. Give it a name, doesn't really matter. And off we go. So let's test it out. We'll head over to Babylon. Give the page a refresh and drag your file into Babylon. Bing, bada boom, bada bang. We have our GLB. Now that it's working in here, let's just do one quick sanity check. And I'll do this in 3D Viewer in Windows. So here we can just isolate our albedo. Check that, which looks fine. Our normal text is working. Our metallic's good. I also use metallic for things like glass. And our roughness is looking fine. Double check your occlusion. Make sure that's all honky dory. And then our opacity channel. Lovely. So, if that's what you came for, you're good to go. However, if you're interested, we can delve a little bit deeper into actually what's happening here with this script. And why we also have the secondary script. So let's refresh the scene and take a look at the material. You'll notice that our V-Ray materials are in a multi-sub and they also have an open subdiv modifier on all my objects. To optimize for GLB, the script will condense your multi-subs and remove your open subdivision modifiers. So let's run the script and take a look. You'll notice our multi-subs are now condensed into one GLPF material with our diffuse, metal, roughness, occlusion. And in our V-Ray scene, we didn't have that occlusion texture. It'll actually search the directory where your other textures are and locate that for you. In my case, I deliver my V-Ray models with normal DirectX, but GLB requires OpenGL textures. So it'll swap it based on the naming. But if you just have one normal texture, then it'll just keep the one you have. However, if you work differently from me and you'd rather keep your multi-sub instead of condensing it down, then that's what the secondary script is for. This is easily replaced just by dragging the other script, keep multi-sub, into the viewport, and it will update the script to the new one. And now just rerun the script. Now you'll notice that your multi-sub is still there and your GLTF materials are inside your multi-sub. The reason I use multi-subs, even though the textures are the same, is so that when I'm in V-Ray, um, whoever uses the model can swap out the fabric or the metal for something they have on file, and it keeps it flexible for them and me. So this way, you have two options of which script works best for your workflow. So let's reset the scene for now and bring the old script back in so we can demonstrate some workarounds to some common problems you might have. So for example, with this plant here, I have two UV channels. The first one is with stacked leaves. So all the leaves are sitting on top of each other. However, this is gonna break your occlusion. So I'll usually have a second UV channel where it's all 
non-overlapping. This also means that your material should reflect this. So if we go to our occlusion, you'll notice that you have your channels at the top here. So just select channel 2 for your occlusion and we're good to go. So let's re-export the scene and do a quick test in Babylon to make sure that that's correct. In Babylon, you'll see our previous export that we made and our occlusion's not working on our plant here. So when we drag in our new export, our test, it should resolve that issue. Also, take note of anything like a plant or something with opacity. The script by default finds anything with an opacity texture and sets the alpha mode to mask. The script will also find anything such as our candle here with the word glass, water or liquid in the material name and use alpha blend instead of alpha mask. This is so that our glass appears correctly in real time. As you can see on our wall art and also on our candle. Now I'm going to explain one last technical detail so you don't trip up on this. And it has to do with your material and object names. Now because I have the same name for my material that I do for my object, the Autodesk exporter is going to give it this ADSK matte prefix. This affects textures, it affects materials, and it puts your objects in these node groups. This poses a problem for me because I prefer to have all my naming consistent, and so do my clients. This is why I still currently use the previous V-Ray to Blender GLB script. Because as you can see here, I'll take the Blender one in just to demonstrate the difference in the naming. You'll see all the textures, materials, and geometry is exactly how I expect it to be. So there is a workaround, and that is two things. First of all, don't put a number at the start of your material name, which is unfortunate for me because all my materials are prefixed with a number. The second thing is, if you just change the material name to something different than the geometry name, you won't get that problem. So let's just export it now with a new name for the material as a test to demonstrate what I mean. Now that we've made this change, let's drag that test file into Babylon and you'll see in the textures and materials that issue is now resolved. However, you still have your geometry in node groups. However, if that's not a concern to you, then you are pretty much good to go. If it is a concern to you, you can always use the V-Ray to Blender GLB script I made, linked in the description. Enjoy!